Won't you come and talk with me? Make sure you bring your tea. We can talk about movie eats. Hi guys, and welcome to the fourth edition of Tea Breaks with Doug. I'm delighted to announce my guest today as my old and dearest friend, Mr. Phil Murphy. Say hi, Phil. Hello. Hey, hey mate. Yeah, how are you doing? All right. Good. Taking yeah. a break from work. Yeah. Well, well, I just want to say thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I just want to ask you a nice... Everyone knows what's going on at the minute. So I just want to ask you, uh, yeah. what, is, what are you drinking? And do you have any sides to start this lovely tea break discussion off? So I'm drinking Yorkshire tea, as it's the only thing I drink. Yes. And I'm drinking yeah. it from my wife's mug, because uh, she's a Sephora addict. And it says, my name is Kim, and I'm a Sephora addict. <laughs> Nice, nice. Um, well, nice little shout out to Kim there, bless her. Biscuits Hello, wise, I've got chocolate digestives. Oh, oh. And some fig rolls. Fig rolls, oh mate. Fig rolls are horrible. My mum loves yeah. fig rolls. Mate, I love them. They're about 45p in little and I'll just demolish a packet. Are you, are you ready for are you ready for mine? So mine's even worse than yours. And you are almost tied with Jordan until you said fig rolls. So we'll see where you uh, <laughs> land on the meter. Okay. I have 199 instant coffee from my local corner shop in my Sunderland mug. Yes, nice. Ooh. And a bit different. I haven't got any biscuits. I did a Joe Wicks little workout before, so I deserve this. A Mars protein bar. Yeah, so, fair you know, you're, you're a gym addict. You love a little bit of protein. I thought it'd be nice yeah. and fitting. Um, so before we start and ask the questions, I want to run through a tiny little story of when I think about me and you and films. <laughs> Um, okay. Do you remember 1995 at all? Oh God, probably not. I barely remember the last week, so try me. We we were kids in primary school, and technically, you are the first ever friend I went to the cinema with. I'd been to the cinema before with family, and they dropped us off and watched a couple of films. But I, I remember me and you being the first ever friends that we, like, my mum took us to the cinema. Do you remember what we watched? at all where where did we watch it was it darlington it was darlington it was the massive the the, the upstairs theater which is still large as when you're an adult when oh, you're a kid it's huge. um so you came up to me in year i want to say it was year five and you were like hey hey dag do you want to go to the cinema and i was like yeah yeah that'd be cool that'd be cool and you went well how about you ask your mom if she can take us <laughs> <laughs> so i oh, went dude. okay so i went home nervously plucked up the courage and went mom is there any chance uh, we could go to the cinema, please? And she went, yeah, why not? And I went, oh, wow, oh, okay. Um, can, can I take a friend? And she was like, yeah, 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 who do you want to take? I was like, oh, well, Phil asked me if I want to go. So anyway, your mum and my mum organised it. We went to Darlington and we watched Pocahontas, my friend. No. Yes, do you remember that? We watched Pocahontas, the Disney film in 1995. And I remember that. <laughs> I remember seeing the guy in the corner with his ice cream and selling popcorn and I was like, oh, I'm going to push it. I was like, oh, where's that some ice cream? She's like, yeah, 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 sure, come on, here's some money. So we like shuffled through the aisles and got some ice cream, sat back down. Best cinema day ever, one of my first experiences. And the film ended and I remember turning to you and went, I didn't like it. And you went, do you remember what you said? Do you have a clue what all? You went, no. oh, I enjoyed it. I have a crush on her. Oh, no. <laughs> No, hey, I don't actually remember seeing that. And why would I pick Pocahontas? It's like the least manly film possible. Hey, we but were no, actually, no, no. I am having a bit of a recollection now. I do remember something similar and probably, yeah, I have a bit of a crush on a fake character. A bit weird. But yeah. Mate, yeah. it's, it's the thing that, you, like, I look back on it now and I was naive and you swindled me. You're like, oh, do you want to go to the cinema? And I was like, yeah. And you're like, you ask your mum if she can take us. And I was like, okay. I was so nervous. But anyway, um, that is uh, my first ever cinema experience. Thank you very much, sir. Very much appreciate it. So we'll get on with uh, Tea Breaks with Doug, hashtag TBWD. And our first question is, Murphy, what is your favourite film and why? Um... Well, it changes quite a lot, but at the minute, um, it's probably Hunt for Red October. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. No, no, I have not. Right, so it's uh, this is what it is. So it's an American um, spy film. It was made okay. in 1990. Um, it's got um, 
Alec Baldwin in it, Sean Connery, and Sam Neill from Jurassic Park. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's, that's yeah, so basically, it's film. yeah, so some you know, big actors. Um, yeah, American spy film. Um, so Sean Connery's this like Soviet submarine captain, set in the Cold War, um, and he wishes. Why you joined the Navy, isn't it, Because of this film. No, I just I just find it really really good. Um, and basically, he wants to defect um, to the US. Basically, yeah. And there's a part in the film where I just really enjoy it, where he's trying to escape uh, another submarine, and he just says like he goes just one ping, and it's literally one ping. So in a submarine, you have to ping to find out where you're going. Hmm. It's just a just a great film, and yeah. I think because it's navy navy orientated as well, like the job. That's why I enjoy it. Um. What was the what was the film name again? I might have to check this one out. It's called it's called The Hunt for Red October. Hunt for Red October. Yeah, I'll send you a link to it. But yeah, it's a really really yeah. nice film. It sounds ish familiar. Like I think I may have heard the title way back, but yeah. I, mean, I can honestly say I've never that, seen. And that Alec Baldwin, he's from I think it was in Be the Beetlejuice. That's not Alec Baldwin. Ba the Baldwin brothers are very famous. Um, he's in like. 30 Rock, the TV show and stuff. I don't yeah. know if you've got oh, the I correct do. person there. Um, I do look at IMDb and it said he was in Beetlejuice. Really? I can't remember. Yeah. I'll follow him. I may be wrong. Maybe wrong. I might, I might get some hate from like Dan, you know, a massive, uh, my, my film buddy. He might be having a go at me once he watches this. Yeah. Um, so we'll move on to question two, which is if you could feature in a film, what would it be and why? Um, Probably one of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Oh, that's a decent Just, be, just because, I don't know if it's fake, but if it was real, how cool it would be back in them times to be an actual pirate. I'd be a pirate, I wouldn't be the good guys. You'd be a pirate. Would um, you be um, a dead man chest pirate or would you be a good pirate? Probably be a dead man, dead man pass pirate. Yeah. Just, yeah. I just think it's quite cool just being in the sea and like some old wooden ships. So, um, another Navy themed. Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Pretty much shows I love my job. <laughs> I can't. Uh, I can remember watching um, the first Pirates of the Caribbean, and it absolutely blew me away. Like, I wasn't expecting it to be as decent. I just had a little bit of hype, and I think we went to the cinema to watch it. And yeah, no, that would be a cool world. We've got better. Like, I really enjoyed the last one. Like, graphics wise, like, just films now are just on a different level, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very much. So. I think I got a bit lost watching the third one, if I remember, because I didn't really remember the plot of the end of the second one. And yeah. the third one, the first hour, I was just like lost. And I was just like, Mah. but no, that, that's, a, that's a great pick. I, a left field one I wouldn't have thought of. Um, yeah. so move on to question three. What is an underrated movie that everyone should check out? Uh, right, it's a really old movie, and it? it still scares me to this day. So we had a film called The Tooth Fairy, but it's not the one with the rock in it. <laughs> that is the one I was thinking of, and no, right. I've not heard of the. So this one obviously thing. isn't with The Rock. Um, it's a horror from 2006, and I watched it as a child, stupidly. And it's about this family that move, and basically, you're going to leave your teeth underneath the pillow for the tooth fairy to get. And it's all to do with witches and stuff like that. Anyway, they burn this woman because they believe that she's a witch, and she ends up being this like evil tooth fairy. And effectively, there's kids doesn't like being in the dark um, and he sees the tooth fairy and it's this like evil thing yeah and yeah. there's a scene from it that just scares me to this day where he's hidden a bath in the light and basically the camera comes out and you see this thing just like hanging over the door and it just terrifies me yeah. it's, it's, a, it's an old film but it's scary there's something else I should check out um do you watch many horrors are you were uh... yeah yeah not yeah. with Kim but I do like a horror, like stuff like all them like Thirteen Ghosts. All right, okay, yeah, all right. yeah. I do like a like a proper horror, like all the Annabelle films. Any yeah, any horror I'm a big fan of. Um, I think I stopped watching horror films. I started joining them again in uni because I had a friend who was scared, and all my housemates we used to watch them all together, and that was fun. But I remember if anyone watches this, who I used to work with in Scotch Corner, we went to see. Oh, what was it called? There's a scene with like a, oh, it's a mirror. It's one of those stupid. Obviously, you know it's going to happen. She opens the yeah, yeah. mirror three, four times. The un, unborn, unseen, something. Like that. Anyway, I screamed because I, I was so scared. I mean, I literally screamed the cinema down, and people oh, no. behind me laughed the hell out of me. 
and I was too embarrassed to watch uh, horror films again. So uh, yeah, I'm not a big horror fan, but okay. Um, and again, that film is called uh, The Tooth Fairy. The Tooth the Fairy. It. Everyone check it out. A nice horror film. From film. Yeah. So we'll move on to question four, which is what is the best scene in a film? Um, probably from Pulp Fiction. Okay, uh, right. I presume, you have, I presume you have seen it. Yes, yes. I, I remember okay. watching it. I think my our, our friend Butler made me watch it when I was like, he was like, oh, I've seen Pulp Fiction. Have you seen it? And no, I lied to him. Just playing it. Yeah, of course I have. And I was like, no, I haven't. So at home, and I had it on VHS back then, I think, still. Yeah. Put it on, watched it, and I hated it. I hated it. Really? Yeah, I was like 13, mate, and I didn't understand oh, right. what was going on. They were like, the the scene where Uma Thurman gets stabbed in, like, to get uh, adrenaline to you know, basically, you know. Yeah. I was like, this is far too heavy for me, and so much blood and gore. But okay, so tell me what's your favourite scene? Um, so there's a bit where they're in this bloke's house. And um, so it's obviously Samuel Jackson in uh, John Travolta in the kitchen, basically interrogating this bloke. And um, there's a bit, and this other bloke sat on the sofa and he's chatting when he shoots him. The bloke's like shocked. And Samuel Jackson's like, I'm sorry, did I break your concentration? <laughs> and then he carries on. And then he's like, he says, I think he says, like, oh, do you, um, do you read the Bible? And then he quotes, uh, Ezekiel twenty five seventeen, the path of the righteous man is beset on yes, yeah. I think both yep. sides. Anyway, quotes it line for line because I've looked at it and then finishes off to shooting him. But I just think it's a really good scene and it's funny. It is a beautiful scene in a, um, like slight humor, intimidation. Um, it is well written. It's well like perceived. And Samuel Jackson, you know what I think of him. But do you know yeah, there is a slight link between that and one MCU film? No, I know it's got something to do with the Jack Ryan film series. Well, so in the MCU, uh, when Samuel L. Jackson in The Winter Soldier fakes his death, that quote from Ezekiel is on his tombstone. So uh, Pulp Fiction made it into the MCU. Ah, yeah. so there's another one that's like that, where... Oh, what's, I don't know which movie it is. I think it's a Marvel movie where the bloke drops his key ring and he's like, oh, do you like so-and-so? And he's like, yeah, I do actually, but it's because it's from a different film. I can't remember what it, where it's... You, you might know. A key ring. I'm trying to, trying to think of the same oh. key ring in it. Unfortunately, I'm drawing blank, but I am enjoying my protein Mars bar. Actually tastes yeah, good. I'm fig rolls. Fig rolls. <laughs> what, your taste buds must be like for a 60-year-old woman, though. They're My so mum loves that's what I'm basing it off. Um, okay, we'll move on to the next question. What, pardon me, what movie moment made you fall in love with film? Um, probably E.T. So I think that's, not say the first one, because I think it's Pocahontas, but <laughs> E.T. Yeah. Um, I think from back then, in terms of how it was made, it was really good. And it's sort of like, it's definitely a kid, kid, kid's film. Yes, yes. Uh, well, it's a, it's a bit where it's like right? ET's in the um, he's in the closet, isn't it? Not in the closet, it sounds weird. Um, he's amongst <laughs> ET. Yeah, ET comes out the closet. No, he's he's in amongst all the teddies, isn't he? Because he's hiding. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that, and I think it's just a. I've not watched it in a, a very long time, but yeah, it's a, it's a good film. I think that sort of like set me on sort of like liking films. ET is a great little choice. Um, I remember actually being, I think, when I first watched it, as a kid, I was quite scared of E.T., if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. He was just quite scary, his little thing, but yeah, E.T. is a great little film. Um, little him and Elliot, just loads of, loads of references. It's been referenced in a million films since then. But like, can you remember back when you first watched that? How old would you have roughly been, do you think? Well, what it says, well, it was... Out before I was born, so it was, yeah, it was yeah, 1982. Yeah, 1982, and also born in 89. Um, what the hell? So maybe seven or eight. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm glad ET shown you the way of film, sir. We'll move yeah. on to uh, question six, which is what is the best song in a film in your eyes? What do you think is the best song in a film? Um, I really like, and I've seen this film. This is weird, but on board, it used to be on repeat, basically. <clears throat> Especially when it came out, 
Mm-hmm. So the Great Showman. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you never expect it. But the Greatest Show, the song out of the Great Showman called The Great Show, and uh, I think it's a like, great song. And it, if you're in a bad mood, you put that on, it'll put you in a good mood. It is a Oscar nominated song. I was not expecting that out of your mouth, my friend, at all. That threw me off. <laughs> was it even yeah. the last day of my Mars bar? And it nearly made me choke. The Greatest Showman. Um, but I am going to sit here and confess I've not watched it. Um, oh, really? No, it was, I think it was a film for friends and family to go and watch together and enjoy. And I think by the time I was interested in going and watching it, everyone had already seen it and I've just missed out. And I think it's been on TV. I probably will catch it at one point. But uh, yeah, do you want to give us a rendition of the song? Absolutely absolutely not, because I can't (laughs) sing. But I I watched it, because I think Kim wanted to watch it with me. And I was like, no, like, doesn't look like my kind of film. Mm -hmm. And I think... No, I did. I ended up watching it here, and I really, really, really enjoyed it. And yeah. then put it on board, and then me and the lads was like thirty of us would watch it in a mess. And then it, it, it just got to the point where after the film was finished, like every night we're like cleaning, they put like the great show on or like other songs from the film, uh, and everyone starts singing. But yeah, it's a good film, and even watching it means song is good. I um I can't see Hugh Jackman anything other than Wolverine, unfortunately. He's just Wolverine to me. He's been in other films and I've watched him in like yeah. Australia and stuff. And I'm just like, you're just Wolverine, mate. Unfortunately, he's burned into my retinas like that. Um, but thank you very much for brightening up my uh, tea break, sir. Um, and we'll move on to the last question, which is what movie does everybody love but you dislike? And Jordan had this question where he flipped it around the other way, which was what movie does everybody dislike but he, lo- uh, he loves? So... It's up to you. How would yeah. you? I'll go, with, I'll go with the original. <clears throat> However, this is going to completely contradict myself with the last question in terms of it's a really good film and the singing. So, probably La La Land. Oh no, no! <laughs> yeah, it's too, like this is going to sound bad, but it's almost like too musical for me. I've seen clips of it, but like you say, I'm contradicting myself by saying how much I love The Great Showman. <laughs> I'm glad you used it. to watch it. You refuse to watch La La Land, mate. Yeah. You are missing out on a gem. Um, La La Land, oh, I, was, I was hoping I could get, talk about this film um, one time on here, but I love yeah, it. Yeah, go on. Just, just tell, me, tell me why. See if, you can, see if you can convince me to watch it. Okay, so you get past the first five minutes, which is a song on the highway. I remember sitting in the cinema with Dino and I was like, I'm ready to bounce, mate. This is going to be rubbish. I'm so glad I, ch- I stayed. Um, unfortunately, like films have that nice unique quality which can speak to individuals or masses as a whole and I guess if you've been through experiences per se you feel more connected to films I guess but La La Land is a traditional love story which then in the third act is modernized because the him and her people who are meant to be in love they are in love with each other and they want to be together but they realise that they want different things from life. So they end up splitting up. Um, just put ugh, everything from costume design and colour and set design and the music in it. And I'm not just talking about the songs that they sing. I'm on about the score. It is fantastic. Um, it's not, you know, they're not the best singers in the world and they'll be probably the first people to admit they didn't sing it the greatest that they ever could. But that you're missing like the crux of the story there which is it's mo- like how many how many people do you know these days who may have broke up in relationships because one wanted to go and do a career and didn't want to settle down like that is i know, I know one recently i'm not going to name names but i know it's something that's happened recently to a friend yeah exactly and it's just and then there's this whole crescendo right at the end which is it plays the what would have been if they'd stayed together and it's heartbreaking mate um yes i 10 out of 10 love land it would it would make my top film that i saw in the past decade and it could make my top 10 films of all time uh, absolutely love it. and I, i'm sorry i've just spread on that you need to watch it sir you okay need- i'll make it i'll make an agreement with you right you have to watch the greatest showman soon <laughs> and i'll watch and i'll watch la la land okay deal deal sir i can't believe you've just said that 
La La Land, my friend. But no, well, um, yes, yeah. you. It's incredible. It is incredible. Watch it. Um, well. well, thank you very much for being a guest. I think we may have taken more than a lot of time of tea break, which is not normally happens on this show. So uh, just before you go, sir, I'm going to mark you of where you come. What did you have? Fig had? rolls. Yorkshire tea. <laughs> fig rolls. <laughs> fig, fig rolls and maybe one digestive. I've got some marmons as well. <laughs> you got a whole like sugar fest going on over there, mate. Yeah. Wowza. Uh Where do you think you deserve to come? I on. think I'm... Who's at the top, Dean? No, uh, Jordan, my friend Jordan, who had Yorkshire tea and chocolate digestives. Just spoke to me, oh, he right. right into my hands. So you're close, mate, because I nearly had a, um, I drink a lot of lattes as well, so I nearly got a um, <laughs> latte as well. Lattes, yeah. how fancy. It Lattes. keeps me going throughout the day. Um, I reckon below Dean, just because of my fig rolls. No, I'm not, no, no, sorry, not below Dean, below... Below no, Jordan. Jordan? Below Jordan. Okay, I'll stick, I'll stick you here, sir, because I do agree with you. Yorkshire tea, well played, and some chocolate digested, but those fig rolls. You are second on our board at the minute. Um, thank you again for joining me. I hope you do stay well and enjoy yourself as much as you can during lockdown. I hope you and Kim stay safe. Uh, I'm just going to say goodbye to everybody. Yeah. So thank you very much, Murphy. Goodbye, everyone. And remember, cheers, enjoy, and drink your brews. Cheers. See you, mate. Bye.